my fair citizens of Sodium City, we have MTG Arena announcements for June 30th, 2021. Now in this video, we're going to cover all of the really, really cool things that are going to be happening. There are so many, so many possibilities with what they're doing with the new event that we're going to be covering in here. Uh, there's there's just so much that it could make Magic Arena so much better than paper on so many other levels. They're finally... I, I think they hired some people that know what they're doing now, or some people that are actually in touch with what the people have been talking about uh, and, and pe what people have been complaining about and what people have been wanting. And so I think that Arena is headed in a very, very, very good direction. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So for today, we're going to take a quick look at the June 30th announcement. Now, this has a lot of pretty big inclinations in here. I was able to take a quick glance at a couple things that we had going on, and uh, we'll get to that. Most of this shit I don't really care about. I mean, some of this stuff is cool. Uh, the pre-orders, I mean, fuck it, we'll just go into it. So uh, pre-orders available now. Just as a reminder, every time a new standard set comes out on paper, if you are a chief or executive on YouTube or a tier two or tier three subscriber over at Twitch, then you will get a paper pack sent to you. It'll be opened by me. We'll have a video of it. It'll be a blast. So make sure to go ahead and hit that join button to see all the various perks you get for being a member, or you can go over to my Twitch stream and be a subscriber over there. But of course, make sure to join the Discord server. That's the easiest way to get in touch with me. And of course, the uh, box openings will happen after the packs actually come out because paper isn't coming out till later this month. I think it's a couple weeks after Arena gets it on the 8th of this month. Month. I don't exactly know what date the paper product comes out, but I'm sure we'll put it in the video frame somewhere uh, for Adventures of the Forgotten Realms. All right. The big thing is the way I have mine set up is that my Magic Arena is I just have the shortcut to my executable. Now, if you're only using your executable uh, to open the client, the shop doesn't update you have to actually update itself so you have to right click on your shortcut go to open file location double click on mtga launcher here should be there should be a folder and then double click on mtga launcher.exe this will actually update the client which will then update the shop and then you should see the pre-order of the sets apparently the pre-order was available for like a week and a half before I even fucking saw it. It was in the store. I didn't even see these in the store for like a week and a half or two weeks or something. And I saw it on someone else's stream. I was like, oh shit, they made it available. And so I logged in and I was like, what the hell? It, was, it wasn't there. And so I had to go through it and I actually had to manually update. So if you don't see it, that's why. So that, that's the process you'll have to go through. So once again, right click on your shortcut, open file location, double click on MTJ launcher folder, and then double click on MTJ launcher.exe. And that should update the client and allow you to do the pre-order. Anyway, so pre-orders have started. Cool shit. Uh, we have Spider Queen which I approve of. He's, I mean. I mean, come on. It looks cool. Uh, I think she's a shitty planeswalker, but she looks cool. And that's all that matters, right? Um... Yeah, you get the packs. This just goes over with the, what the pre-order is. All right, so the play bundle, you get the sleeves. Okay, we don't care. So those are each of the bundles. This is the pet. Yay. So, Mirror Mirror rewrites historic July 3rd through 6th. This is the important thing that I want to stress more than anything else. I think this is very, 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 very good. 
So July 3rd through 6th, step through the looking glass of an alternate reality where Oko, Thief of Crowns, is just another great historic card. Just another great one, like it was terrible to begin with. Um, or Tefri Time Raveler is more of a friend than foe to the format. Yeah. Uh, given that MTG Arena is a digital expression of magic, we want to experiment with some of the advantages of digital magic can offer. Finally. Finally, they're starting to get it. I mean, I think they understood it. They just didn't know how to do it without pissing a bunch of people off. But their reason, before we even get into this, like just this statement here, historic, they've said, is curated for MTG Arena. It's arena only format. It's not an MTGO. It's not on paper. There's not like whatever sanctioned paper tournaments for it. It's only Magic Arena. So they can do a lot of cool stuff with it if they go out of their way to do it. And that's why they can uh, do the historic anthologies and pick and choose cards to ban. They can possibly do um, restrictions, be like, okay, you can have one of these cards in your deck. Or you can have three of these maximum and things like that. That They can experiment with a lot of different things, which I think is really cool. And it allows them for a, um, a lot of power. But more importantly, they can actually change the text and rules or whatever on specific cards. Because it's digital, you know. You, there's something called like, what, like testing one. You're like, actually testicle three you know you just change whatever you want um so we want to experiment with some of the advantages digital magic has to offer mirror mirror opens a portal to a historic event which 12 banned cards have been rebalanced i like it i like it a lot allowing you to play with those versions instead this event is all access, which is also fantastic, meaning all cards are available to you. Build your deck, even if they're not in your collection. Obviously, when a card gets banned, everyone gets refunded the wild cards anyway, so most people probably don't even have these cards. So uh, that part was kind of necessary. But the rebalance cards have the MTG Arena A logo on it, which you'll see here. Before their names, note the logo is Mythic Rare Colored Version. On all these cards, it's independent from the card's actual rarity. So you see, this is a rare Ancient of Treachery, but the Mythic A, it's whatever. Uh, in exported deck lists, the cards will appear with A- minus at the beginning of the card name. Good to know. That's actually really cool how they go out of their way to say little details like this. Most people won't even think about this until they're trying to share deck lists. Like, at all. Most people won't even think about that. And the fact that that was, like, one of the first things they did. I think that's really smart. Um, if you want to import the deck, use rebalance cards. Be sure to include the A- minus before. See, and again, that's really, really cool. Because if you're doing the... You have things like Historic Brawl. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay, so you'll have Historic Brawl. You'll have Historic. And then you could have rebalanced versions of cards. So with that, are you going to actually have different versions of the cards? Because obviously, they, you know, they have the A- minus in front of the text, which they are technically, that means they are entirely different cards. I mean, they were different cards to begin with, but they're different cards in the database because they do different things. They're also labeled and referenced differently all over the place. So it's almost, they essentially just added brand new cards in the deck, or in the game completely with this. Um, but anyway... Uh, you can find these cards by using advanced search, doing set and see, which I think we already have some sets that are arena specific. Like arena only cards that are all trash. And I think we have a seven mana one one legendary, I think. If I'm not mistaken.
No. No. I know we have there. It, there are cards that have just like an A next to it that are arena only. I don't know. Whatever. It's irrelevant. Irrelevant. Anyway, so yeah, you get to search for the cards in the deck builder. Super Carl. I like it. Rebalance cards cannot be crafted or otherwise added to your collection. It's also really, really cool. They had to do a lot of extra coding to do this shit, right? So they had to have been planning this for quite some time. Um, so some of the cards, Agent of Treachery, the rebalancing, enters the battlefield ability triggers only if it was cast from your hand. I really like this. So almost, it got like the Zakama treatment. Uh, it got the... I mean, there's a lot of cards that were only cast from your hand, right? So, uh, when Agent of Treachery enters the battlefield, if you cast from your hand, gain control of target permanent. At the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. Which is really, really cool. It's a super powerful card, but people were cheating it in on, like, turn three and four. Um, if you cast it. Um... Right. If you cast it. Yeah, so if you cast it. Yeah, there's not a whole lot. Yeah, Waking Sun's Avatar, Angel of Dire Hour. This was, these are the only two that I know that are actually like playable. <laughs> I guess Feasting Troll King is playable. But it'll essentially go into that realm. It'll go into that realm of cards. So oh, that's cool. We like that. We like that that exists. So Field of the Dead, Legendary Land, finally. Now I guess WotC said they didn't want to do Legendary Lands anymore uh, because it feels bad if you have more than one in your hand. So it's like, whatever. But also, not only is it a Legendary Land, uh, which means you can only have one on the battlefield, Zombie Tokens enter the battlefield tapped, which is like a big nerf. Like a big Big nerf. I don't even know if that's usable at that point. Well, it probably still is. It probably still is, yeah. It's probably still really good. It's still like passive, passive win condition. They don't really need to do much for. It's still a really good card, even that. But this is probably how it should have been printed. The tapped might be a little bit overkill, but it should have definitely been a legendary land to begin with. But hopefully people start playing that and we can just start blowing up lands again, right? <laughs> if only these changes were permanent. Uh, Fires of Intervention. Uh, so yes, the mana changed from four to, or from three and a red to three and a double red. So this is good because... I guess, like, a little bit more difficult to cast uh, as far as the mana requirements. I would have rather... I would have rather had triple red, like, two and a triple red. If they were going to increase the mana cost and just add a red symbol, I mean, it, it doesn't really... It doesn't... It doesn't really stop much. But, yeah, it's the same. Uh, you can't cast spells... Or you can only cast spells during your turn, and you can cast only up to two spells per turn. Then you can cast only spells with a mana value less than or equal to the number of lands you control, and then you pay them without paying their mana cost. So essentially you just want to try to get five lands onto the battlefield as quickly as possible. So really just turn one, uh, turn one grazer, turn two, cultivate, turn three, fires of intervention. And then and then whatever other five mana, whatever five mana value card you want. But that's basically what you want to do. It's essentially the same thing. I think Fires is probably fine-ish. It's still rough, but it's fine. Next to Fate, it exiles itself instead of shuffling into your library. So it's seven mana instant, take an extra turn after this one, exile itself. This loses all of its novelty. They should have just not even done anything with this. Like, there's no fucking reason to have this. 
Like you should have just been like, you should have just brought Brainstorm back, or not Brainstorm, Time Warp. Should have just been Time Warp, five mana, exiles itself. <laughs> Even though this is an instant at seven mana, is still it exiling itself. I don't know if it not exiling itself was necessarily the issue. It was definitely shuffling back in, but it was also shuffling back in from anywhere. Uh, so if it got milled, it shuffled in. If it got discarded, it shuffled in. But like everything. So it was just it was just bad. It was all sorts of bad. But now it just exiles itself. Four mana Omnath. Could we not though? Right? Enters the, the enter the battlefield ability is now scry one instead of draw a card. That's all they changed? Really? I actually didn't even know that that was an enter the battlefield effect. Honestly, it doesn't seem like much of a nerf. Of all the th of all the things. Yeah, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. That's it. Which, that's obviously really good. It scrying is less good. But I hear from good people that scrying is like 0.5 of a card draw. But that's, I don't even think that's necessarily why Omnath was good, right? It was good because the landfall triggers. So like whenever a landfall enters the battlefield under your control, you gain four life if it's the first time. If it's the second time, you add red, white, green, blue. If it's the third time, it deals four damage to each opponent and planeswalker you don't control. Like that. I don't... No, I don't think I don't think the draw over the scry was the issue I I think everyone's going to play this because this is just going to be ridiculous right um Oko still a three mana four loyalty planeswalker which is still fucking insane to me uh food creating ability change from plus two to plus one okay so four loyalty comes in with plus one so it's Five loyalty when it comes into play, essentially three mana. It's like if you turn one Grazer, turn two Oko, and you're on the play, your opponent has one mana out, and the opponent has Oko. <laughs> that, that sucks. That feels so bad. It feels so bad. But that's it. But yes, the elk making cost change from plus one to minus two. That, I believe, is a necessary change. Yeah, so target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a green elk creature with the base power toughness 3-3. Three, three. So yeah, making, making Oko have a removal ability that isn't free and isn't pumping your Oko is good. Although now it seems like it's unusable completely. <laughs> yeah. Minus 5, exchange control target art. Yeah, I mean, Oko is unusable in this state. It's pretty unusable. Once upon a time, uh, if it's the first spell you've cast this game, it costs one instead of nothing. Okay. Uh, and then you look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or a land card from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. This is still pretty good card. Unfortunately, I never actually played with this. I never played with Oko either. I had the pleasure of playing with everything else except with Oko. I think I was around when Once Upon a Time was... Uh, maybe not. I think it was banned, like, the same... Were these banned at the same time? I'm actually not sure. I don't recall. But... Yeah, being able to do this for, like, free is ridiculous. You could put in a tap land to scry or something and then do this. It's ridiculous. Or do this for free and then scry. But now that you have to pay one, makes it quite a bit better. Four mana Tefri instead of three. That's great. Mana cost change from three to four. Starting loyalty change from four to five. I like it. You're still in stomp ability if you do your minus three. But it coming out on turn four instead of turn three, I, this that might actually be fine-ish. But I still fucking hate the passive. The passive is what's annoying more than anything else. 
but I think I still would have liked it. I think I still like it. I think it'd be fine. I think it'd be fine. I'm gonna see a lot more control decks, which means I'm gonna have to run this with land destruction, right? Uh, Uro, still three mana. Yep. Uh, the put a land from your hand onto the battlefield, removed, and then uh, life gain and card draw effects remain. So when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you gain three life, but you don't put a land into the battlefield. So Uro is still pretty good, but it's not a ramp card anymore. Veil of Summer, yes. They should just unban it. They shouldn't. This should be not rebalanced. This should be unbanned. Just period. Or they should just make this change and unban it. It would suck if it's two mana, but oh, I guess I'd accept it. It, sh it should just be one green. They should, they should just unban it. But Veil Summer, two mana, draw a card if opponent cast a blue or black spell this turn. This is insane. The spells you control can't be countered this turn. The whole turn. And your permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and black. That's ridiculous. Till the end of turn. This allows for so much bullshit, but it saves a lot of decks from a lot of bullshit from happening. I just want Veil of Summer unbanned. I think there's too many powerful things in the format right now for Veil of Summer to, like, I, I think it's perfectly fine. Wilderness Reclamation uh, ability lets you. Untap up to two lands you control instead of all lands you only two. Oh, that's a uh, for four mana. <laughs> for four. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. Two. That's all you get. You get two. I mean, it's like Tefri. It's like the five mana Tefri, right? <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. They nerf the fuck out of Wilderness. I mean, I'll allow it. I'll definitely allow it. I don't care. Renota ability allows you to look at the top four cards of your library instead of the top six. Okay, this makes Winota better. Uh, I think I think that's probably fine. It puts it more in line with Muxus. So I think Muxus looks at the top six. Maybe seven. Looks at the top six, but also costs six. Winota costs four, so you look at the top four. But you also have to attack. There's other conditions with Winota. I think they could probably un just unban Winota the way it is right now. To be honest, I think they could probably just unban it. It'd be fine. Yeah. But again, a lot of these changes are really interesting. And they're just for an event. They're just for an event that's happening between the 3rd and the 6th. So once this video releases, it'll be the day after, I'll probably actually do uh, a video on this event because I'm really interested to see. But I really like the fact that they're toying around with rebalancing specific cards, especially ones that are banned. Um, I, I think they need to do it. And I think if they actually put this into legitimate fruition and it goes through in Arena, they make it uh, permanent or they continue to do it to other cards even if it's not banned cards but just cards that may need a little bit of a buff or things that may just need to be toned down a little bit or like i said restrictions and stuff like that it changes to rules i think it's possible that historic will be the preferred magic format under commander i think it'll be command i think commander is probably going to be the most desirable format just because you're doing four players if Commander was on Arena, it would be a fucking wrap. Like, it would be a fucking wrap. But it's not. I don't think they're ever going to do that. Well, they can't, but that's a different story. But, yeah, I, I think if, if they got to the point where they could do that, Historic would just be on a completely other level than every single other format. I know Modern Horizons 2 just made Modern an amazing format as of late. Uh, but I think if they ended up making these changes like this and continue to do that, uh, I don't see a reason to play any other format in Magic. Uh, so the new State of the Game article goes up on Friday, which is the day that this video will be released. So I'll be reviewing that on stream. 
So make sure to check out the stream times in the description below. Um, to get the in-depth scoop. Sure. Chromatic Cube happening. Yeah, Chromatic Cube is still going on. I haven't done the Chromatic Cube yet. I don't know if anyone's actually interested in me doing events or videos of the events. So actually, let me know in the comment section below. I'll probably have that as question of the day, but uh, do you actually want to see me do any of these events that happen like once every week or once every two weeks? Like the FNM at Homes. Like I could maybe do these videos once a week just to do something a little bit different. Not exactly sure, but yeah, let me know. Let me know what you all think about that. Upcoming events. Don't really care. Quick drafts. Other events. Still got Jumpstart. Don't forget to do your Jumpstart. Try to find those elusive Millstone Islands. Beautiful, beautiful islands. Other events. Traditional Chromatic Cube. Mirror, mirror. That's what we're looking for right here. Starts on Saturday. Saturday. It'll be good. June ranked season. The only reason to get from Plat Diamond Mythic is one pack more. You get the same card styles within Platinum Diamond Mythic. You get the same amount of gold within Gold Platinum Diamond Mythic. Only thing that goes up is the pack. Plat is three, Diamond is four, Mythic is five. It's essentially pointless to get to Mythic. And the thing is, most of the time, from what I've noticed in the the year and a half, two years or whatever I've been playing Arena, is that people will essentially rush with an aggro deck or a super easy grindable top tier deck until they get to Mythic. Once they hit Mythic, then they'll just fuck around with like whatever off meta, weird, jank, brew thing. So like, the percentage part of mythic like the lower ish percent so once you get into like the mid 90 percent like 80 to 95 percent mythic is all just like fucking wackadoo shit right that's all it is in mythic it's really weird so a lot of people just rush to mythic for that extra one pack and then they just fuck around for the rest of the season i just pretty much fuck around the whole season <laughs> it's just sometimes we do a lot of really good decks, and it just plows us through Mythic. I think last season and the season before that were the only ones that I haven't hit Mythic for a while. It's been a while since I've hit Mythic. I just didn't care. I never care. So the rank season, whatever. That rank season, still nothing. June, July. So even for this rank, even though a new set comes out in Arena on the 8th so in one week in one week a new set comes out and uh we're still only going to get strixhaven packs from it which does suck but it's whatever that wraps it up for the announcements on june 30th let me know what you all think in the comment section below and as for yesterday's comment question of the day i asked you what is your favorite non-legendary token here are your answers If you want your comment featured in these videos, make sure that you answer the comment question of the day every single day, seven days a week in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to this point, it means you either really enjoyed the video or you fell asleep and I'm waking you up now. <laughs> either way, thank you for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, come out of the video seven days a week.